And so then the Lord, he, he, he just basically said to me, I can do this. Don't think I can't do this. I'm going to do this. Now, I've been carrying that for 30 years. I've been praying into it. For 30 years. I don't know why the Lord tells us things 25, 30 years in advance that we want now. But he does. He needs it birthed. He needs our faith to help produce things. He needs it announced until it becomes a company of people interceding and declaring and praying. And he needs, frankly, he needs the waiting, the waiting period to do things in us that he can't do any other way. But he brought that back to me this morning to remind me again, along with this testimony, which was sent last night that I didn't see till this morning, that we're coming into the Horeos time, the, the Kairos Horeos time. We're coming into an Acts chapter three season where signs and wonders are going to be taking place that are going to astound, astound people. And millions upon millions of people are coming to Christ. It is almost going to be, in fact, it will be overwhelming to cope with this harvest. going to be glorious. So I'm telling, you know, I'm telling you this because I want you to pray, but I'm also telling you this. If you're a leader, you better get ready. You better start thinking about praying about it now, how, how to plan for this. What are you going to do? You know, when the early church enacts, Grows in one day from 120 to 3,120. And a few days later, another 5,000, and it's 8,120 plus whatever one or two here and there are getting saved. And they found themselves in a situation where they were, they were just scrambling to cope with this. What do we do with it? They had no structure. They had no concept of what to do with it. There was no such thing as pastors and, and teachers. There, was, there were rabbis in the synagogue and, and you know, priests. But they, this new structure, they had nothing yet. They didn't have deacons. They didn't have elders. They just had a revival. They had signs and wonders. They had the power of Holy Ghost. They had a message. They had a risen Christ that was confirming their message with signs and wonders following. And the best, one of the best things about it was they had no religious system to get in the way. So, there are a lot of things that leaders feel like are important. They're going to know in a year or two or three, these things are not important. And I'm not talking about doctrine. I'm not talking about scripture. I'm not talking about worship. I'm, not, I'm just talking about methods and structures and systems. You're going to find, you're going to find that things just have to change. 
And we're going to have to all become, in a sense, new wineskins. The concept of a wineskin in Scripture, wineskins had to be over and over renewed. Because the skin would harden. I know you know this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. A wine, you know, and when it's empty, it dries. And it hardens. And it even, because of the fermentation process of the previous wine, these bottles would, you know, the, as the expansion would take place, the, the, uh, the skins would take on even certain shapes. And there might be a little bubble out here. and might might be a little bigger over here and it just and then they would harden in these shapes and then before they could receive new wine which is going to go through this process again they had to be softened again by putting them in water for a while and then rubbing oil into them the word and the spirit is the, is the symbol symbolism to get them ready for new wine. And it wasn't, this wasn't a one-time thing. This, every, every new batch of wine, you had to be prepared for it. You had to be softened and flexible again for the next batch. So that the shapes and hardness and forms of the last one didn't stop this one. Because if that thing's still hard... And brittle, and you put that new wine in, the fermentation comes. Jesus said it breaks it, stretches it. You lose the wine and the skin. So you got all these people now that have been part of past movements and what God's been doing 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. And I don't care who you are as a human being, that shapes you. And you get comfortable Doing things a certain way, that doesn't make you bad, that makes you human. And and it just works, and it's what formed you and shaped you, and you think this way, and you do things a certain way. And some of it you think is spiritual, and some of it's just natural. Your preferences. The way you like to do things. And we all have comfort zones, and we all have mindsets and paradigms. And you can't bring that stuff into the next outpouring. It's really, in some ways, it's, it, 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 it's, it's comparable to the natural realm. It's like business. If you can't adapt and, and be reshaped and restructured, you can't, you're going you're gonna to eventually, somebody's going to pass you by, you're going to lose it. 